When you call a suicide helpline in Japan, you may have to dial that number 30 or 40 times because the lines are so busy. A lot of people have a lot of problems, but nobody to talk to, nobody to listen. And they say, please God, someone answer the phone. A dream of a war, a war on suicide. But I don't even know who is the enemy. Who is it? What is it that's killing so many of us? One million people in the world every year. 30,000 lives lost in Japan alone. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know I have to do something. In Japan, nobody dares to talk about the causes of suicide or how to fight them. But manuals teaching you how to kill yourself sell over a million copies. What if 10,000 lives could be saved in Japan? Not by miracles, but by ideas, by honesty. Would anybody dare to listen? If death is darkness, this is about life. This is about trying to take back life from the jaws of death. This is about choosing hope over despair. Even when you are desperately hanging on by your fingernails. 300,000 Japanese people have killed themselves in the last 10 years. That's around the population of Iceland. The Japanese suicide rate is twice that of America, three times that of Thailand, nine times higher than Greece, and 12 times higher than the Philippines. Is that something acceptable? Or is it time we start to fight back? One year, driving around Tokyo, asking so many people the same question again and again. The suicide rate is high in Japan still. Um, to be honest, I don't know the real reason. But the fact is, killing ourselves is always maybe in the back of our minds. Um, we see every day in the newspaper, in the media, some people are killing themselves, including famous and successful people like uh, politicians and business people. Um, when we face a serious problem, we have to make some certain choices. And one of the ultimate choices that we may make is uh, killing ourselves. そういう方法で死んだ仲間を見つけるとですね、もう皆それに同調する。ですから彼らはネットであの時々示し合って一緒に死のうと。で、これに乗ってくる日本人は非常に多いんですね。で、彼らの率直な気持ちは一人よりも
totally out of shape with the rest of the world. There is nowhere else where the suicide of novelists is so prevalent. この自殺多発場所はなんでそういう自殺の名所になったかということなんですね。当時僕の場合には地元のね作家で高見純一の本です。死の淵とかっていう本を書いてね、それが大事にしてね観光地にしている。またあの足摺美作品は神谷寅彦ですかという人の小説映画化になってそこを観光自殺の名所として売り物にしています。Yes, I was the person that suicide is a kind of beautiful thing. Before having the experience that my friends committed suicide, suicide was something unrealistic. That's why I, can easily be, I could easily believe that suicide is something beautiful. What Mishima did in real life was, was not so beautiful. What he killed himself in real life. It's so different from how he, he wrote in his novel, right? In his novel, the sweet, killing, himself, killing, killing by himself is so beautiful, right? And it's, it's such a、uh, sort of gorgeous moment or something. That's what he described in his novel. His suicide should not have happened. I was broken by it. I was really, really unhappy with the suicide. And it's still with me today. It's an unbearable event. And when I say it should not have happened, I mean that those of us who knew that he had suicidal tendencies should have stepped forward and should have found a way to enable him to continue to live. Talking about the book publication, I was stunned to find how. To kill yourself, in which the way how to put your hanging ropes, how to make it all the details. I think it's quite natural to have such a manual of, of how, to, how to kill yourself because if I decide to kill myself, I don't, I don't want it to you know,、uh, take so much time to, <laughs> you know, until I totally die, right? Because it's I don't want it to, you know,、uh, suffering from, you know, pain you know, or something like that. It was like a teenager's room, and unusually for, for Japan, he had like a bunk bed. He was half naked,、um, you know, wearing pajama bottoms, on the bed with his back facing me. His back looked kind of pink,、um, and he looked like he was asleep.、Um, and there was like a piece of paper attached to his back, and I, I didn't really pay attention to it. And, You know, for, for some reason, I felt like you know, I should wake him up and see what's going on.、Um, and as I was about to do, the detective stopped me and told me, Hey, stop, move back, do not touch that kid.、Um, and when I looked at his back,、um, written on the paper was, you know, Do not touch, fear of electrocution. And looking from the side, you could see that he had taken wires and sort of plugged them into the sockets.、Um, The, you know, the plugs of the wall and taped them to his chest and had electrocuted himself.、Um, and th- there was a kind of like slightly unpleasant acrid smell. Like, I-, I guess it smelled a little bit like burnt bacon. I don't know how to describe it.、Um, and the detective showed me a copy of the book.、Um, it had been marked with a fusen, which is like,、uh, I guess, a post it in English. Um, at the section for electrocuting yourself. And the detective said, You know, I'd like you to write about this because I think this book is a really horrid thing.、Um, and that parents should know that if they see their kids with this book, that they may seriously be considering suicide and that they should talk to their children and explain to them suicide is never a very good answer. And I agreed with him. I was in the last year, I was in the last year. ご遺族から一人一人お話を聞きましたほとんどの方はその本の存在を間接的に何らかの形で読んだことがあるないは別としても存在は知ってましたそして私は数百件の死にたいつらいもう生きていくのが耐えられないって方の相談を受けましたけれどもほぼ全員がその存在の本の存在を知ってましたやはり何らかの影響は確実に及ぼしているかと思います。It 
whispers in your ear, kill yourself, you know. Are you tired? Are you overworked? Are you burdened with problems, you know? Wouldn't it be nice to go to sleep and never wake up again? I mean, that's kind of how one of the chapters runs. Um, it makes suicide seem like an appealing solution. And by rating the levels of impact and, um, you know, the lethality and the amount of pain involved, it appeals to various different kinds of people as to, you know, how do you want to kill yourself? Why do you want to kill yourself? Um, do you want to kill yourself and cause your family great distress? Well, then jump in front of a train because um, the train company is then going to make your family pay huge damages. Um, the problem with most people who kill themselves is very short-sighted. Are there some part of their brain that thinks they're going to be around to enjoy um, the funeral or the, con or, or, uh, the whole commotion that's created by their own death? Um, or, or that they'll know how much they were loved, or that their girlfriend will realize they love them, you know. But when you're dead, you're not around to do that, uh, unless you believe in ghosts. And even then, what do you do after that? It's not like you can come back and reclaim your body. I think media, particularly TV stations, why they are reporting the specific name of the victim and the way how they killed themselves, these things are just intriguing somebody who wanted to kill themselves. They love news stories like this. Somebody goes on front of the train, they're hit by the train, their body flies in the air, off the track, in through the convenience store window, injuring three people reading magazines inside. That is sensational. People enjoy that. But if you want to do something to stop, train suicide, that's not interesting. We're not interested in it at all. Mass media ni disas no news news ga deru to sugi no hi wa disas ga popot to doko demo dete kuru ke Nihon wa keta ga chigaru desu ne. 100 nin, 1000 nin. De sore wa ne yappari kora Nihon jin no mentality de shou kere demo yappari yoku mo waruku mo yappari tonari no shito no yatteru hoho o mina maneru toyu ka desu ne. They regard suicide as the way to entertain audiences. Media no naka de, ano, mo kubi o tsutte nakunatte ru shin to ka, tobi yori ru shin to ka, mo atari mae ni, ma dete kuru, sono bubun ga kane hosi sarete ru no de, jibun de ko imeji shi asui to mo desu yo ne, ko nakunari kata, kubi o tsuru to ane tsuta, ano, tobi yori ru to ka desu ne, ma, so ko so nyo ga de tari, mo yo dare ga tare tari, nami da ga to ka desu ne, kubi o tsutte nakunatte ru ki ni wa, so shita ko, karada ni, son, son shou to yu ka, ano, damage ga, できるんだというようなことはあの今それほど語られていない。In which to die. Now I must admit, it is a truly beautiful place, but not to die in, because your body will be left undiscovered for several months, be eaten by all the little forest animals, and become the happy home for a wide variety of insect life. Until eventually you will be carried out in a black plastic bag by tired municipal workers earning $10 an hour. But there is something even worse, the human scavengers who will come to look for you. Treasure hunting. They're not looking for gold or silver. They're looking for rope, razor blades, shoes, wallets, or they're looking for the jackpot. They're looking for a hanging body. You put that hanging body on YouTube, you get a million people viewing it, downloading it. You get TV shows, serious news shows coming here, looking for bodies, viewing corpses, skeletons from every angle. You've got movies coming here talking about ghosts, spirits, all, it's haunted. All, all trying to make money, all trying to use here as entertainment, a place of tragedy. And what happens is that 
more and more people will come here. More and more people will kill themselves. It's already the number one suicide spot in the world. Stop advertising it, mass marketing it to make money. Why not try and do something about suicide rather than promoting it? You've lost your job, you've been cut in all of the employment cutting that's going on, but you still have a mortgage with 20 years left to pay. You've got children's education fees to pay. What do you do? Well, you go, you get the solution is here. It's very easy. You get all your debts are paid. Your mortgage repayments are finished. And your children will have a great education. And you'll get maybe $300,000 or so. And all you have to give is your life. People would come, sign a life insurance contract and go straight out and kill themselves under the nearest train. They said, okay, well, that can't happen. That's, that's a little bit ridiculous. So we'll put a one year exemption period on this. So you sign a contract and you must wait one year before killing yourself to get the money. Well, that's still a very, very good deal for desperate people. So the suicide rate spiked on the 13th month. The insurance company said, okay, well, what if we have two years exemption? So you signed a contract, you can't kill yourself for two years, the 25th month. Why is it that life insurance companies pay out on suicide? Stop paying people to kill themselves. Stop incentivizing people to die and leave their families alone. Which family would say, I'll take the money, I'll lose the husband? One of the things I really admire about Japan and the Japanese is this deep sense of personal responsibility, especially as it relates to debt and money. And one of the unfortunate things about Japan and the Japanese is that a way of showing responsibility is to kill yourself. It shows uh, sincerity, that you really are sorry. ま、借金の問題ということ Consumer finance in Japan has always had a little bit of a reputational problem. It's a very difficult industry to regulate because all you need are a big bag of cash and many desperate people to be able to charge them very high interest rates. In fact, it's a little bit difficult to distinguish in Japan sometimes the difference between consumer finance and loan share. Despite the support of big banks and glossy TV commercials, some very old style collection methods have been used in recent years. Why not sell your eyeballs to eye banks? Why not sell your kidneys for a transplant to use? So this exactly is saying just you, why not, why not kill yourself and get your insurance uh, payout money as a fund for repayment of a loan? In 2005, the government noticed a very disturbing trend. 5,000 people had killed themselves and life insurance policies were paid, not to their families, but to consumer finance companies. Consumer finance companies were routinely taking out life insurance policies on borrowers. They had never bothered to tell them, and a suicide was a win for a consumer finance company. Consumer loan companies, uh, people uh, visit not only to the debtors, but also their family members or relatives or their offices. So this gives a very big pressure for them to select the last way to commit suicide. We've got to control the consumer finance companies. We're going to reduce the interest rates. We're going to crack down on the behavior of companies. And everybody said, this is great. The government is finally doing something positive. But there was one big winner from this. 
And unfortunately, that was organized crime. People who cannot get money um, from legitimate sources will simply go to um, shadier sources. And the shadier sources will be better um, and more vicious about collecting their money.夕方5時 で、もちろん建前としては最近ではこう早く帰りなさいと、あの、過労死になるとよくないからとか家族との時間をもっと持たなきゃいけないからというのをみんな建前では Nobody kills themselves in a right state of mind. Nobody calmly says, you know what, I think that's enough now. I think it's time to kill myself. I've, I've had enough of life. It is always an element of mental illness. It is always an element of depression that forces people to do that. Two thirds of all depression comes from a trigger, from a pressure, from I can't get enough sleep. I'm being overworked. I'm being bullied by my boss. I'm being, I'm being forced to work these terrible long hours. I'm being given impossible goals that I can't do. I'm an inferior person. I'm a failure in the company. And I just, I just want to get out. I can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. Again, this hierarchy of male chauvinistic society, that's killing them and pressing them. あの、メンタルがこう調子悪くなって会社を休んでしまうとか、ま、いわゆる A Japanese taxi driver will never try to cheat you by taking you the long way to a destination. He goes the wrong way because he just doesn't know where he's going. He's probably working a 30-hour shift and is living a life he never expected or wanted. で、基本試験のプレッシャーって、ま、結構大きいんですけれども、最近の親の傾向として、あの、教育を投資として考えるっていうのが強くなってきてると思います。で、ま、例
例えば入試なんて言うと親も、えー、いい格好してで面接受けなきゃいけないしそのためにあの準備もしなきゃいけないしそうするとやっぱり自然とあの自分の時間もお金も費やしているのにやっぱりそれ子供にもちゃんとしてほしいっていうのを求めますよね。そういういプレッシャーが結構親から子供に対してきているということが言えるんじゃないかと思います。I know if I don't get into the right, the right school, high school, I'm not going to have a chance. If I don't get into the right university, I don't have a chance. And, and in university, the suicide rates are really, really high in Japan. People failing exams, people jumping off the buildings. And you know, it, it's, it's, it really doesn't happen on the same level anywhere else. Related to suicide, bullying. Is a big issue, in particular talking about the youth suicide. And there is a big fight between groups and individuals. A girl last year killed herself.、Uh, she was eight years of age. She was being bullied in school. The bullies had written all over her school books, Shine, which means die. The school ignored the complaints from her parents. They said she wrote that on her books herself. She hung herself in her bedroom with a towel, and only afterwards, then the school comes out with an apology. It's always too late in the case of bullying. Talking about my experience in elementary school days, my teacher led the bullying to me. I was a kind of unique student from the perspective of character and conduct. The teacher didn't like that and started bullying, and other students followed. For people who have unique way of thinking or unique behavior, Japanese schools are a difficult place to live. In the hospital, there is an emergency room, and I found there were many cases,、uh, so called、uh, wrist cut. They are usually young girls or young women, and they cut、uh, their own wrist with knives or razor. 私、最初あのちょっと主人は DV あったんですよ。であのそういう DV 保護センターみたいなとこ入ったんですけどなんか扱いいが冷たいんですよねで次行ったのが警察になんか連絡したんですもちろん警察はそんな全然何にもしてくれないしあのそういう。公共の施設っていうのは冷たいです。何にもしてくれないです。三十代の問題で、私自身が非常に心を痛めているケースがあります。その方はいわゆる非正規労働者、つまり派遣働いてたんですけれども、仕事を失ってその方の社員料も出なきゃいけなくなった。実家に帰ったわけですけれども、実家とのその家族が折り合いが悪いわけです。30女性も30過ぎますと、まあ、お父さんお母さんから「あなた結婚しなさいよ」「いつまでも家でいるの?」ってことをこう言われる方が多いその中で居場所がなくなってしまうその中で、えー、居づらくなってしまっただけどもじゃあ仕事に出るかでもなかなか今仕事がないとその中で気分がうつうつとしてしまってうつになってしまっていわゆる引きこもってしまった部屋から一歩も出られなくなってしまった当時付き合ってた彼氏からも殴る蹴るっていわゆる DV ドメスティックバイオレンスっていうことを受けてますます人間が関係が不信感になってしまったそしてある時、えー、ご自身のお家のしかもご夫婦のお父さんお母さんの寝室であえて首を吊ったつまりそれは嫌がらせ、まあ、ある意味その見せつけでもあるわけですね私はこんなに辛いのに分かってくれなかった私は現場に行って警察の現場検証から立ち会いましたそして首の縄のロープをほどいて棺に入れて最後火葬するときにお花を入れようとしましたですかあのその今のもはっきり覚えてるんですけれどもその女性は首をぐっとこう絞められてしまっていわゆる窒息死ですねそうするとベロがですね
、えー、垂れるわけですねつまり息私たちがはっはっは走る時にこう息苦しくなる時そういった形でベロが垂れてしまってですね、まあ、ちょっと顔がちょっと,、えー、ちょっと強烈な顔だったそれでお母さんが棺の蓋を閉める時に、まあ、我々お花を入れさせてくださいということを言うわけですけれどもすいませんもうちょっとお顔がねできれば見せ,られた,見せたくないのでもうお花も結構です。One third of all suicide victims in Japan are over 60. But nobody really talks much about elderly suicide. They're just old, tired of life. What's to talk about? The challenge is after retirement. Number one,、uh, no place to go every day. Number two,、uh, no identity in a society. Number three,、uh, no hobbies. Number four, No human networks. And number five, no idea of what I should do. まあ、私は小さなコミュニティで医療をしておりますけれども非常にこれはもう僻地に相当する農村部ですから老人高齢者が非常に多いところですで、まあ、高齢者まだ足が丈夫な方々は病院にまで来られますけれどももう足が不自由な方というのもほとんどお家におりますそれもまあ寝たきりの一歩手前ですですからもう家から出られない程度の方ですまあその方たちがその奥様がいらっしゃればまだいいんですけどもないしはご主人がいらっしゃればいいんですけどもいない場合には非常にもう悲劇的な状況になっているというのがこれは現実でしてこれはいわゆるもう栄養的にも料理もできないそれから家の中の衛生上の問題もありそれからセルフケアもできないから自分自身もお風呂も入らないしもうその状況に置かれてそれでもって一人で生活しておるとこの本当に悲劇的な状況である。If you're on your own, it's a very, very lonely place in Japan. And loneliness is one of the key factors of the problems, particularly for the elderly. You know, they can't get out, there's, there's no way of getting to them. Who wants to talk to them? Loneliness kills so many people in Japan. おそらく来た時には「どうも肩が重い夜が眠れません元気ないんです頭痛がいつもして調子悪いんです」と言いますからやはりそういう時に我々医者としてはそれがただの頭痛でないことを早く気が付いて家庭の状況を把握するような質問をすることによって早く発見をするまあマスクと仮面うつ病という言葉がありますけれどもそういったものを早く早期に発見して何らかの対策をするそれが一つはお話をするカウンセリングということでもありまあ必要であれば薬物療法との早めに始めるということは僕はぜひともしなきゃいけない。I often talk with my wife. If we suddenly get a stroke or something and paralyzed and live on chairs and always need children's help care. It won't be meaningful to live long life if it causes others some trouble. And、uh, most likely, a no- normal person will start to think maybe I should disappear from Earth so I won't cause trouble to loved ones. Gambling is not allowed in Japan. Gambling is illegal. So, what you are seeing here is not gambling. It just looks like gambling. It's people winning and losing money, some losing money and building massive debts. But in Japan, remember please, gambling is not an addiction, and it has absolutely no link to suicide or debt or anything negative. It's all about happiness, especially for the elderly, who really enjoy spending seven or eight hours a day watching all the little pachinko balls falling and saying, What a wonderful life I have. But please, as this poster says, don't leave your child in the car when you're gambling, because they will be cooked alive in the summer heat. Alcohol. Linked to suicide in Japan. How dare you even suggest that? In Japan, alcohol makes you feel better when you're lonely and depressed. And a bottle of whiskey can help you think more clearly and get your life in order. Nobody ever does anything stupid when they're drunk and depressed. And on TV, all the big celebrities will tell you 
Come on, have another beer. It's the summertime. There is really no facilities whatsoever for trying to cure alcoholism here. No statistics exist on the subject. The journalism world doesn't cover it at all. I've probably seen not more than two stories in 50 years on the problems of uh, alcohol. Uh, this is just a problem that's part of, considered to be part of Japanese society, and therefore it's not a subject to be taken up. I live in Shinjuku, Shinjuku is a place where there 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 is a place where 20代、30代の方が非常に多いんですね。特に女性に関してはやっぱりそういった2、30代の方が多いわけです。それは他の区ではなかなかありえないことなんですね。なぜ新宿区で若い者の女性が自殺が多いかというと、当然こういうことが考えられます。私は去年、女性の新宿区の方の葬儀を何件かやらせていただきましたが、やはり夢を持って地方から出てくるわけですね。そして、何かしらのきっかけで夢が破れ風俗とか水商売で働くわけですけれどもまた男性に騙されてお金をむし,むしり取られたりとか何らかの事情で病気を持ってしまったりとかその中で将来を悲観して、まあ、飛び降りたりとか薬を飲んでしまったりとか自殺をする方が非常に多い。That's the blue light. If you look at the blue light, everything will be all right. All your troubles, all your worries, they just melt away. It's a cheap form of suicide prevention, like happy paintings on the walls of stations. And to be honest, I thought blue lights were a complete joke. But early results are showing. A dramatic fall in the number of suicides at the stations with the blue lights. Nobody can really explain why, but blue lights are working. Trains seem a particularly effective way to kill yourself, but statistics show that 40% of all train hit victims do not die. They're just horribly injured, they lose their legs. They lose their arms. Pity the train drivers who are left haunted by what is known as the last look eye to eye contact, the split second. My friend was a man who was a man who was a man who was a man who was で、その後、JR の人と親しくなって、JR のホットラインを僕ら引き受けたんですからね。で、なんと JR にはですね、人身事故担当の課長がいるんですね。<笑>で、その課長に聞いたら、あの、一度人身事故が起きると、だいたいね、全体で7000万ぐらいの損失なんです。それはお客さんが他の路線に行ったり、乗らないから。で、それプラス、遺体の処理とかね。で、600万っていうのは、遺体の処理に関わる経費だそうです。それが、それを請求してきたんです。で、まあ、あの、まあ、家族は全部払ったんですけどね。<笑>まあ、日本の社会常識では、やっぱりそれは遺族の責任ということになるんですけどね。For those who kill themselves in rented apartments, Their parents can expect a large bill from the landlord because evil spirits are supposed to have frightened away other tenants. I think evil spirit is a very good thing. Why is it that the evil spirit is a very good thing? It's a very g o o お払い料の請求はね、これは、あの、人権に反すると
いう判断で僕はね却下すべきだと思うんですね。One suicide has 10 suicide attempts. That means there is at least 300,000 suicide attempts in Japan every year. That means that there's a lot of people who, are, who have tried to kill themselves that are going to the hospitals. In Japan, it is reported that it's an amazing、uh, number.、Uh, it is reported that 10 to 20 percent of the All the patients transfer to the most critical emergency、uh, medical centers in Japan,、uh, including like cardiac problems or strokes or、uh, traffic accidents. 10 to 20 percent of the patients transferred to the ER are suicide attempters in Japan. The suicidal people are coming into the hospitals every day, cutting their wrists, overdosing. And what happens is that the hospital will put a bandage on their wrist and say, Don't do it again, off you go. They cut again and again and again and came back to the emergency room. You could save so many lives, so a suicide attemptee comes in. Option one, have a psychiatrist there, have some kind of a social worker there. Is it too expensive? Yes. Well, at least take their name, take their details, follow up with them. Are they all right afterwards? Why not put them in touch with, with some psychiatrists? Why not give them some free consultations? Incentivize them to try and get help, to not just come back, go back home, and a week later cut their wrists again and they're off again. Because one of the times, one of the next times, They're not going to the hospital, they're going straight to the morgue. Here we are at the ground zero of suicide in Japan the Japanese mental health care system. When facing the dark horrors of depression, what support can Japanese people expect in their hour of greatest need? Psychiatric services. Uh, not so good in Japan so far, I think. One reason is that a large number of psychiatric people are hospitalized, in- institutionalized. And、uh, because, partly because of that, the support in the community,、uh, support for the psychiatric patients in the community, are not、uh, good or not sufficient. And so、uh, the psychiatric patients are very hard to live. And in this, Very difficult societies, these k i n d of people, so,、uh, so to say, the weak people s are pushed aside to the,、uh, out of the society and they、uh, choose to kill themselves. Of 30,000 suicides in Japan, 10,000 are already in the mental health care system. They are having consultations, they are getting medications, or they have been institutionalized. Japanese psychiatrists are forced to deal with a very large patient base so that the average clinic can include 40 or 50 clients or patients in a metropolitan hospital setting, such that the psychiatrist only has three or four minutes per individual. Do you think you can solve your problems in three or four minutes? Especially when the doctor. Is already spending half of that time writing down so many prescriptions of medicine for you to take. Does it work? Does it matter? Of course, here you go, take your medicine. There's already somebody else outside the door. You know, you have your problems with the debt, you have the problems with your family, you've been bullied at school, you're feeling that life has no meaning. That's the time over now, please. As a result of limited resources, both in terms of psychiatry as well as paraprofessionals, trained psychiatric nurses, social workers, and other mental health professionals, care in Japan has been largely focused on psychosis, largely inpatient, and has included very long hospital stays and primarily custodial care. 
When you go into a mental institution in Japan, it's very hard to get out because mental institutions are private institutions, like hotels. And we know that in a hotel, you have to fill the beds. You have to fill the room occupancy. Physicians have to rely unduly on high doses of multiple antipsychotic medications, which is really very unusual. So the kinds of treatment that one might expect in the West, individual therapies, group therapies, milieu therapies, simply don't really exist yet in the inpatient psychiatric settings here. Every journey must have an end. Our journey ends here, on the cliffs of Tojimbo. Yukio Shige was a policeman sent to work at one of Japan's most infamous suicide locations. His job was often to go out in a small boat and fish the remains of victims out of the sea. In one month he recovered ten bodies and wondered, why did nobody ever try to stop the people jumping? When he retired he came back to Tojimbo to try to do something. He used his retirement money to open a tiny cafe near the cliff's edge. And from there he patrols every day, all day. The symbol of the loneliness of suicide prevention in Japan. で、ま、民間でできる我々の人やろうかということで行政が仲間を募って。で、ま、87名のね、うちのボランティアの人がいるんですけども、大体そのうちの20名ぐらいがね、一緒に巡回してくれています。ということで、今今日現在 どういう状態かしと、ここが一番実はそういう場所なんですね。ここに人で西尾を待っているんですよ。座ってるんですよ。誰か声かけてくれるの待ってるんですね。そんな人がいて。で、その人たちに声かけて、悩み事何話を聞
she said she'd barely leave her room. I quickly got bored listening. It was depressing. So when a knock would come, I turned down the TV and keep quiet. She slipped a tiny note under my door with her phone number, email address, phone email, saying, talk to you soon. Then thankfully she stopped knocking. A couple of months later I got angry when the landlord wouldn't fix the gas leak that was leaving such a horrible smell in the corridor. She was only discovered after three or four weeks of the summer heat. Two days later I looked out the spy hole of my door to see an elderly lady stacking boxes. Despite the smell she didn't wear a mask. It was still her daughter. No matter how many people I interview what answers I find, saving 10,000. I will always know I couldn't even save one. I didn't care. It's not up to the government to save us, blaming this or that. Sometimes all you need to save somebody's life is to take the time to listen. If we're looking for the enemy on the war on suicide, all we have to do is look in the mirror.